Now we end this first night time of 1995 with a look at the overnight news headlines from ITN. Good morning. This is the morning news from ITN on New Year's Day. Secret cabinet papers just released show that the government 30 years ago feared rumours of a homosexual affair involving a Tory peer would wreck the Conservative Party. The papers from 1964 have been released from the Public Records Office under the 30-year rule. Adam Holloway reports. Some of the commentators wading through the 1964 papers are drawing startling comparisons between the political landscape of 30 years ago and that of today. After 13 years, the Conservatives lost to Labour and her modernising new leader, Harold Wilson. Released documents show that the day Labour took office, officials were briefing new ministers on the real extent of the country's economic problems. Sleaze also sold newspapers in 1964. Lord Boothby was a prominent Tory. Amongst the papers, there's a letter from Boothby denying separate allegations of homosexual dalliance. He said, if I were a homosexual, which I'm not, I should not choose either gangsters or clergymen. The stories were unfounded, but we now know just how much they'd worried the then government after earlier scandals. But to find out how valid such comparisons really are to today's politics, we'll have to wait another 30 years. Russian forces have begun the new year with a fresh onslaught on the Chechen capital, Grozny. Moscow says its forces are now within firing distance of the presidential palace. Russian bombers and artillery left buildings ablaze and killed or injured a number of civilians. But Chechen fighters claimed they'd repelled the attack and seized more than 70 Russian tanks. Five people have died and 80 were injured in a fire at a hotel in the Belgian city of Antwerp. It started when a Christmas tree caught light during a party. Now, cricket and England have been fighting back after a disastrous start to the third test in Sydney. Tim Nielsen reports. England began just as they had left off the last test. Gooch caught behind for one, his test career now surely over. Hick bowled by McDermott for two, another test innings failure. Then Thorpe leg before and England were reeling at 20 for three. But then entered John Crawley for his first test in the series. And slowly but surely, Atherton and Crawley pulled England back into the game. Atherton's dogged concentration was rewarded, a late cut bringing up his 50. He'd played a real captain's innings. The runs then flowed. The 100 partnership came up, and Crawley was soon to reach his first Test 50, a wonderful innings from the youngster. And the latest score, England are 181 for three. People across the country have been braving the cold to welcome in the new year. In London's Trafalgar Square, an estimated 80,000 gathered to celebrate the arrival of 1995. 15 people were arrested for drunkenness. And that's all from the ITN Morning News team. From all of us here, Happy New Year. Sunday night time begins at 11.15 with a movie premiere starring Billy Crystal and Alan King in the poignant story of a young doctor seeking a reconciliation with his ailing father in Memories of Me. That's followed by another film with an Oscar-winning performance from Jill Clayborough as a deserted wife seeking independence as an unmarried woman. Lynn Parsons presents the album show and the sequence ends with another film, a vintage British melodrama in which Sean Connery made his film debut in a minor role, No Road Back, Sunday night time. Good morning and a happy new year. The main news and sports stories this morning. In Belgium, five people have been killed and about 80 injured when a hotel caught fire as 500 people gathered for a new year party in the town of Antwerp. The blaze started when a Christmas tree at the Sweitel Hotel was set ablaze by candles. Some of the injured were flown by helicopter to hospitals in Brussels because of a lack of space in Antwerp hospitals. 
In Spain, three Americans have been killed and 22 injured in a double-decker bus crash. The bus was ferrying more than 40 Americans around religious shrines in Spain, France and Portugal. Millions of people across the world spent the night welcoming in the new year. In Edinburgh, there was a special Hogmanay festival with massed pipe bands marching through the city. And in Glasgow, more than 12,000 people gathered in George Square to celebrate the beginning of 1995. Chris Bockman reports. Big Ben had the time, but Trafalgar Square had the romance. Some celebrated in style, others just celebrated. This New Year's Eve, Nelson seemed to say, give me your huddled, bundled masses. Well, I'm freezing, but not too much. Happy not too bad. I can stand it. Trafalgar Square may be Britain's most famous gathering point for swearing in the New Year, but many Brits stayed away. The Germans, Spanish and Japanese took their place. I want to celebrate with my friends. Despite the cold weather, 90,000 people showed up here. However, for the die-hard revelers, once again, no chance to jump into the fountain. They were closed for the occasion. There were more than 25 arrests, but police said their heavy presence was justified. We think, being responsible, we need to tell people of the potential dangers. If they still decide to come, then at least they know what they're likely to uh, face when they get here. Elsewhere, thousands of Muscovites packed into Red Square for their traditional New Year celebrations. Parisians showed it doesn't have to be spring to show passion. And in the Big Apple, savvy New Yorkers who normally try to avoid Times Square still made their annual pilgrimage to see a ball drop. In Northern Ireland, people celebrated the New Year with hope for the future. For the first time in a quarter of a century, they go into a new year with peace in sight. Chris Botman, GMTV News.